Good morning all. Today, this. What is this? It's an Ant Miner R4. So what does it do? Well, it uses electricity and converts it into cryptocurrency. It's a machine that makes money. Well, it used to make money. Um, it doesn't really anymore because the problem is electricity is now so expensive and cryptocurrency is now so worthless that these things actually make a loss. Once upon a time, of course, these things did actually make a profit because they were, and probably still are actually, the most powerful uh, computers or computing equipment that can do the calculations necessary to secure blockchains. Um, but most of the time that they were highly profitable, they spent with the original manufacturer under test uh, earning lots of money for the manufacturer and then of course when these things became somewhat less profitable but still profitable they were sold to the likes of you and me and uh, for a while probably a few months they made good money but then as more and more people got these things and of course these machines all compete with each other to earn bitcoin or whatever the other cryptocurrencies uh, are that they're earning they the profitability went down until it was kind of borderline uh, whether or not uh, they would earn back the money that they were using in electricity should you buy one of these no i wouldn't recommend it am i going to buy any more of these no i think this one is the last ant miner that i'm going to buy i have a bit of a fascination with these things but if they sit there losing money well what's the point so I've just removed this fan, it's a little 12 volt uh, two wire fan, so it's uh, fixed speed. And what it appears to do is cool down these uh, power converter areas on the main hashing boards here. Um, it looks like it might have been a bit of an afterthought actually. And some of these, this is a very rare machine, but if you do see these often uh, for sale, this fan's missing because the whole point of this machine is it's meant to be quiet and this fan is actually quite noisy but there we are 12 volt fan let's get uh, these boards out next i'll undo these data cables oh, they come out quite easily there are two boards here they're identical but they are turned face to face um, so they look slightly odd uh, okay so i need to get these front brackets off these ones they're not very big they're just little brackets holding these boards in and then they should come out so what is it with me and ant miners? Well, I kind of wanted to learn cryptocurrency. So I studied it on the internet, on YouTube. And it came to a point where I wanted to actually mine cryptocurrency. So I had to get some of these ant miners to see what was involved in mining. Um, but you do realize after a while that uh, <laughs> free money is not a thing. There's no such thing as free money and any machine that uh, claims to make free money, ultimately it's going to fail because everyone piles in, dilutes it all down to nothing and the machines end up not making any free money. All right, that brackets off. So uh, one little notch for the board that's sitting further back, one big notch for the board that's sitting further forward. These are obviously asymmetric. So one sits more further forward than the other, slightly odd. Right, next one. Let's move that down and take this one off. I don't think there's any way I'm going to be able to show this whole machine in shot at one time because it's quite big. It's probably a foot and a half, 18 inches or so uh, long that way. Two and a half, three inches tall if you include that bit there. Right, last bracket and then we'll take a look at these hashing boards. Right, these come out slide out and there it is i'll put it to one side get the other one out and then we'll have a closer look now if you've seen my ant miner videos before you'll have noticed that this looks very different and that's mainly due to the fan you've got this large centrifugal fan here very long the full length the full length of the hashing boards and the idea of this is that um, it's much quieter than the machines that use um, essentially a tunnel and an axial fan at each end because those axial fans uh, can get very noisy when they run up to full speed. Whereas this centrifugal fan, I'm not sure if this is actually a radial fan, but it's certainly centrifugal. 
um, runs much more quietly. And the idea of this machine is that you could use it in a domestic setting or in a uh, in an office or something like that. So this is the connector for the fan. Now this is a four wire connector. So this uh, centrifugal fan actually has pulse width modulation, speed control, a taco signal coming back. Now I don't know how uh, commonly available centrifugal fans with four wires are. So it's highly likely that it would be very difficult to replace this fan if it failed. And so the only other board in this unit um, is this controller board. I'm going to push these little holders out to get the controller board out. There it comes. So this is um, an internet accessible board, or at least it has ethernet on there, so it can talk to the internet. Um, and circuitry to control or talk to using these serial interfaces to the hashing boards and then uh, fan control. Other than that, uh, it's got an SOC, a system on a chip, a RAM, I presume, and a flash memory for the uh, program code. Actually, I might go a bit further because I've seen some screws here and on the underside, and it looks like it's possible to take the uh, fan off the holder area for the two main boards. Uh, might mean that we can have a bit of a closer look at the fan, so I'll take all these screws out. Right, that is the uh, box that holds the two main cards, well, and the controller card on the top there. And now I'm into the fan, so perhaps we can have a look at the manufacturer name on the fan, if there is one. And it seems like the fan assembly is held in with these four screws, so let's take those out, and then the fan module should come out of this tin can. Okay, let's take that out of there, and oh, there is the fan assembly. There's the, uh, I don't know, motor head, is it? Right, put this uh, fan cage to one side, and that's the fan module. So while I'm in here, I suppose I can give this a bit of a clean. Okay, at this end, there is just a bearing with some sort of rubber cover there. At the other end, we have the motor uh, cable assembly going in, and then just this headpiece here. But it doesn't look like there's anything uh, written on this motor. Uh, oh, this is screwed in, so that will come out. Um, should I take that out? Yeah, why not? <laughs> in for a penny, let's undo those screws. Well, I've undone this, but of course I can't retract it because the fan blade assembly won't go through whatever hole is in there. So actually, that's not going to come out. I've, I would imagine some sort of circlip has to be removed in order to take this apart any further. I think I'll screw that back in. Now, I wonder if this thing will run off five volts. It's meant to run off 12 volts, but it might run off five. Um, and I don't think you have to supply a PWM signal. I think if there's no PWM signal, it generally interprets it as full speed. But anyway, we'll, we'll find out. So black is there and red is the next one. Oh, it's slightly moved, but I just don't think. Yeah, I don't think it wants to run on five volts. No, yeah, maybe I'll try it again with 12 volts. Right, let's try 12 volts with 10 of these 1.2 volt inner loops. And uh, yeah, that seems to work and it's quite quiet. Right, here's one of the hashing boards. Um, they are just covered in a6. I think actually um, the A6 are on one side only because here you can see that the uh, heat sinks are slightly lifted off the board so they're glued onto the A6 chips. On the other side the heat sinks, it's hard to see because of the lighting, but the heat sinks are pressed down onto the board or glued onto the board. So I don't think it's double-sided A6, I think it's double-sided 
heat sinks. So the number of A6 is simply the number of heat sinks on uh, one side of this board. And then here's a little, I think these are PIC microcontrollers, if I remember rightly. I'll get in close on that in a moment. And then a power supply element. And this is obviously a very high current power supply element. And I think the purpose of this is to take the 12 volts which comes in on these connectors and these are just multiply paralleled so that's simply uh, 12 volts and 0 volts on lots of parallel connections this takes that down probably to uh, a volt or possibly a little more than a volt because these things run at very low voltage which is how they're able to be clocked at such high frequencies um, because of course the uh, voltage movement is not as high as say 5 volt logic would be so yeah, these are very low voltage chips and they run at, I think, 600 megahertz. Uh, so yes, that's the power supply element. Very large, thick copper inductor uh, on there. Getting close on that. And some capacitors. And they're rated 16 volt. Uh, I don't know whether on the 12 volt side or on the low voltage side. It's hard to tell. There's another little power supply element down there there is a little no where is it yes here uh, a pair of black wires here or is it one black wire oh that actually looks like a mod i thought that was an ntc thermistor but it looks like they've tombstoned a component here sat up on end and then run a wire mod round to there that's interesting no that's not a pic microcontroller on the back it's something else however that is a PIC microcontroller. Uh, I'll just read the number. It's a 16F1704. It's not one of the ones that I'm familiar with. I'm assuming it's doing some sort of communication between the A6 here and the serial interfaces on the ribbon cables that go up to the main controller board. But uh, yes, that's an R4 and minor hashing board. It's a very peculiar form factor. And then the controller board is this uh, ant minor specific controller board, system on a chip there. Um, some flash memory is either that or these, and there'll be some RAM as well. This is the uh, this tall item here as the transformer coupling for the uh, Ethernet connector and this is an Ethernet controller. Uh, there's a bunch of probably, oh I don't know, are they power supply circuits? Possibly, or possibly comm circuits for the uh, connections here, the serial interfaces to the hashing boards. Uh, on the back here, lots of TX and RX indicators on all these uh, serial communication ports. It's uh, obviously designed so that it can have a lot more serial comms and a lot more fans not all used on this particular ant miner. So there we are, those are the boards out of an ant miner R4, um, designed as a, a cryptocurrency miner that you can have in your living room or, I don't know, bedroom possibly. It's probably quiet enough that you could sleep with it running. Um, it's an unusual form factor there, very difficult to find. Um, it took me a long time to uh, locate and secure this one. Uh, if you're interested in seeing it running and actually earning cryptocurrency, I can do another video uh, so you can see how actually slowly this thing generates income. And of course, uh, well, in effect, how slowly it makes a loss. Unless, of course, you hook it up either to solar power, and of course I've got a system out in the shed, uh, where an ant miner is running from a solar panel and some batteries. Um, or you just think of this thing as a heater because this takes 800 watts. It puts out uh, 800 watts worth of heat. Um, and that while you're heating your office, and that's why I got this because it's intended to be an office heater, you get a little bit of cash back in the form of cryptocurrency. But if you just run these off uh, uh, domestic rate electricity, you'll make a loss. That's it, Ant Miner R4. Cheerio.